Why is silver and gold used for money? I have little stacks here, and he and I are going to explain why. Yeah. All right. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I am pleased to have my son, Little Stacks, join me on this video. Yeah. Because you asked me a question a few weeks ago and it really stuck with me. Do you remember what it was? Uh, yeah. We, I asked why gold and silver were used for money. Yeah, exactly. Other than other stuff, right? Yeah. We've been reading through the Bible, haven't we? Together yeah. almost every day, right? Mm -hmm. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's been great. And... We've seen over and over again how gold and silver is treated as valuable, as money back then, haven't we? Yeah. Gold and silver for millennia, Little Stacks, hasn't just been a way to buy stuff, but it has also been simultaneously a store of value. And that's unique. You know, fiat currencies that... Like that this? Yeah, exactly like this, fiat currencies. <laughs> you got it. They're called mediums of exchange, okay? Mm -hmm. But frankly, um, they're a uh, little more than government pipe dreams printed on pieces of linen. Remember that. They're not stores of value. And any value that they actually have is lost over time. In fact, do you remember that movie we watched not too long ago? Yeah. Uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Pursuit of Happiness, yes. It was with Will Smith, right? Yeah. Do you remember the scene where the son wants a candy bar from his dad, Will Smith? Mm -hmm. And and he asked, you know, I don't know if he asked if he could get it, but I think the, the father... The father had, asked if he wanted one. Yeah, right, exactly. Do you remember how much that candy bar was? Like 25 cents, I think. Yeah, it was a quarter. It was back in the 80s. As a kid... I could remember buying an entire brown bag of penny candy for 25 cents. Mm -hmm. That is the loss of value, little stacks. That's what happens. But, okay, let's get back to your question. Why gold and silver? Why not some other uh, metal or element? Well, you see, gold and silver possess inherent properties that make it a natural choice for money. Mm -hmm. They're rare, but not too rare. And that's important. And we're going to come back to that in a few minutes. But first, let me show you, Little Stacks, and the viewers, the answer to your question through a process of elimination with the periodic table. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you know what the periodic table is, right? Yeah. Did you study it in high school or was it? Middle school. Middle school? Yeah. Okay. So all the elements, but let's start with these, okay? These are elements exist in a gas or liquid state at room temperature and you know standard air pressure much like oh i don't know bitcoin digital currencies it's tough to hold on to them with your fingers all right they don't make good money now these elements right here are mostly alkali or alkaline metals and they usually only occur in some sort of a compound in nature they are also highly reactive in fact, they can burst into flames, dude. Yeah. Lithium. L-I, number three. Have you seen the battery warnings on boxes ever? Yeah. You know, when I go to uh, the post office, they ask me every time, are you, are you sending lithium batteries through the mail? They don't want lithium batteries because they can blow up. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I'd rather not have my money combust into flames. <laughs> <laughs> now, these elements can be really nasty to hold. Uh, stuff like arsenic can be highly toxic. Um, lead, that poisoned ancient people for hundreds of years. Yeah, they put it on, they use it in plates. And uh, when they thought that tomatoes were poisonous because they'd eat tomatoes from lead plates and the lead would go on to the tomatoes and it would poison them. And so they just <laughs> stopped eating tomatoes because they thought they were poisonous. I honestly never knew that. Yeah. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Wow. From what I know. What about these elements? Zinc, copper, nickel, iron, tin. Well, little sacks, these are common elements. They exist in our Earth's crust in really large quantities. They may have industrial uses, especially copper, 
um, you know, you know, wiring and, and that type of thing. But governments love to debase our currency with this stuff because it's relatively cheap. What used to be silver coins in our currency, like this Morgan dollar that I got from my grandma when I was little, it turned into currency now that is 25% nickel and 75% copper. Remember, little sacks, we're looking for rare, but not too rare elements for our money. These don't cut it. Speaking of too rare, these metals that I'm showing now are extremely hard to find. Some don't even exist naturally on Earth. Astatine, number 85 there, is the rarest naturally occurring element on the planet. There is less than one gram of astatine in our Earth's crust at any given time. So using a rare earth metal like that for our money, that'd be ludicrous. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to narrow the scope quite dramatically to five candidates for tangible money. Rhodium and palladium, they were only discovered in the 1800s, so they don't really have a history that goes back thousands of years. Rhodium is a rare metal, and some in the community actually like investing in rhodium, but like I said, it's really, really rare. So it's not a good choice for money. Palladium is a useful industrial metal. It's in uh, fuel cell cars, uh, buses, um, catalytic converters. Occasionally, it's used in jewelry and even dentistry. And for some reason, the French love it. Whatever. That brings us to platinum. Now, I get questioned a lot about platinum. Yankee, what do you think about platinum? Should I buy it? Do you buy it? Well, I don't as a stacker. It is pretty, and it's got that, you know, rare but not too rare characteristic going for it. I mean, shoot, little stacks, you can literally find this stuff in rivers and streams, just like gold. Mm -hmm. And as a paper investment, I actually do like it. But as a physical metal to stack, yeah, not too much. As a prepper stacker, I really don't like how closely it resembles silver. And in an SHTF scenario, I really don't want to have stacked a really expensive precious metal only to have it confused with a less expensive silver. So that's really why I don't stack it physically. Anyway, it's not really a great element to use for money. It has an extremely high melting point of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine somebody from an early civilization discovering it and trying to melt it and you know turn it into a coin or a bar or something like that? They'd probably just pitch it because they couldn't yeah. melt it easily. I don't think it's a really good choice for money. What do you think is next? Silver. <laughs> yeah, right there. This is what everybody in the community seems to love to stack, silver and gold. But silver... It has a lot of desirable properties, and it's been used widely as money for thousands of years. It is rare, but not too rare. Easy to melt, easy to form, beautiful to hold and look at. Silver has done a phenomenal job as a monetary metal. It's mostly seen right now, little stacks, as an industrial metal with a massive number of uses and it's constantly used up too but it does have a little drawback in fact i think i don't know if you can see it on this one uh not too much but it tarnishes mm -hmm. okay a lot of people think it tarnishes because uh, or toning i should say because that's you know what they love to say when they like it toning rather than tarnish but they like to think it comes from touching the silver Nope. It comes from the sulfur in our atmosphere. And that is largely a result of the Industrial Revolution, which increased sulfur production dramatically. So toning, tarnishing, that's an issue with silver. Okay. You can always clean it a little bit like this. Yeah, definitely. This has some tarnish to it. But yeah, whatever. That's silver. But for the one metal that shares many of the benefits of silver without tarnishing, we end up with gold. Okay? Yeah. It's rare, but not too rare. It's easy to melt, easy to form, beautiful to look at. Wait, actually, <laughs> it's 
really, really beautiful to look at. Okay, it has a unique yellow elemental brilliance that really stands apart. It also has many industrial uses too. But where it really shines is that it endures. Little stack, you can stick that gold coin in a two foot hole in our front yard, cover it up, and you can have your great grandkids wheel you up <laughs> to the exact spot and dig it out. It wouldn't look any different. Isn't that amazing? Someone could dig it up a thousand years later and the results would be the same. You could put it in the ocean for a thousand years. It endures. Maybe that's why our country's founders chose only silver and gold for coinage. They inscribed it in our U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't know if you know this quote from Norm Franz, but let me quote it to you. Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of gentlemen. Barter is the money of peasants. But debt is the money of slaves. Little stacks, whatever currency you deal with in your life, whatever central banks print and governments tell you is money and require you to use to pay your taxes, remember gold and silver are real money. I love you, buddy. <laughs> and as always, I hope your day is a-okay.